Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Jackie and I'm here to help you pass your US citizenship interview. Today, I'm gonna be focusing on the 100 civics questions and I'll be categorizing them into groups. Why am I doing this? Because it makes them easier to remember. I've studied a lot in my lifetime, so trust me, this works. All right, let's get started. All right, are you comfortable? I'm in my favorite chair. I hope you are too. Grab a drink, snacks, whatever you need. And we're gonna start with the first category, persons. Okay, first question. You should know this one. What is the name of the President of the United States now? Joe Biden. Second question. What is the name of the Vice President of the United States now? Kamala Harris. What is the name of the Speaker of the House of Representatives now? Nancy Pelosi. Who is the Chief Justice of the United States now? John Roberts. All right, now some historical people. Who wrote the Declaration of Independence? Thomas Jefferson. The Federalist Papers supported the passage of the U.S. Constitution. Name one of the writers. John Jay. An easy one. Who was the first president? George Washington. Another easy one. Who was the father of our country? George Washington. Who was the president during World War I? Woodrow Wilson. And who was the president during the Great Depression and World War II? Franklin Roosevelt. Before he was president, Eisenhower was a general. What war was he in? World War II. What is one thing Benjamin Franklin is famous for? He was a U.S. diplomat. What was one important thing that Abraham Lincoln did? He freed the slaves with the Emancipation Proclamation. What did Martin Luther King Jr. do? Fought for civil rights. What did Susan B. Anthony do? Fought for women's rights. Who lived in America before the Europeans arrived? Native Americans. Name one American Indian tribe in the United States. Crow. Crow. 
What group of people was taken to America and sold as slaves? Africans. All right, so those are all of the people in the 100 civics questions. How did you do? Did you get them all right? Now let's move on to the parts of the government. This is, I would say, probably the hardest portion of the questions. Gets a little boring, but stay with me. Okay, the first question. What is the economic system in the United States? Market economy. Now, the next question is not part of the 100 official civics questions, but the officer may ask you this, so I want you to be prepared. And sometimes people get confused between the economic system and this question. So listen. What is the form of government of the United States? The answer is republic. Next. What stops one branch of government from becoming too powerful? Separation of powers. Who does a U.S. Senator represent? All people of the state. Why do some states have more representatives than other states? Because they have more people. What does the judicial branch do? Reviews laws. Under our Constitution, some powers belong to the federal government. What is one power of the federal government? To print money. Very important. Under our Constitution, some powers belong to the states. What is one power of the states? to give a driver's license. Name one branch or part of the government. The president, easy. And you'll notice the president is often an answer. So let's go down the line. Who is in charge of the executive branch? The president. Who is the commander in chief of the military? The president. Who signs bills to become law? The president. Who vetoes bills? The president. What does the president's cabinet do? Advises the president. What are two cabinet level positions? Attorney general and vice president. If the president can no longer serve, who becomes president? The vice president. If the president and the vice president can no longer serve, who becomes president? The speaker of the house. 
What are the two major political parties in the United States? Democratic and Republican. What is the political party of the president now? Democratic. Who makes federal laws? Congress. What are the two parts of the U.S. Congress? The Senate and House of Representatives. Last one. What is the highest court in the United States? The Supreme Court. All right, so that wraps up the parts of the government category. How'd you do? Take a little break and we will move on to numbers. Are you good at remembering numbers? I think it really helps to categorize them and think about all the different numbers you might need to know so you don't confuse them. Okay, ready? We elect a U.S. representative for how many years? Two. So that's the smallest number. We elect a president for how many years? Four. And we elect a U.S. Senator for how many years? Six. So two, four, six. How many justices are on the Supreme Court? Nine. How many amendments does the Constitution have? 27. How many U.S. Senators are there? 100. And last one, the House of Representatives has how many voting members? 435. How'd you do with the numbers? Now we're gonna move on to dates. Those can be a little harder. Let's see how you'll do. In what month do we vote for president? November. When is the last day you can send in federal income tax forms? April 15th. When do we celebrate Independence Day? July 4th. When was the Declaration of Independence adopted? July 4th, 1776. When was the Constitution written? 1787. When must all men register for the selective service? At age 18. And last one, how old do citizens have to be to vote for president? 18 and older. All right, that was pretty quick. 
So now we're going to move on to geography. Let's see how your geography is. What territory did the United States buy from France in 1803? Louisiana. What is the capital of the United States? Washington, D.C. Name one of the two longest rivers in the United States. The Mississippi River. That's one of my favorite words to say. Mississippi, also one of the longest words. <laughs> what ocean is on the west coast of the United States? The Pacific Ocean. What ocean is on the east coast of the United States? The Atlantic Ocean. Name one U.S. territory. Guam. Why does the flag have 50 stars? Because there are 50 states. Why does the flag have 13 stripes? because there were 13 original colonies. There were 13 original states. Name three. New York, New Jersey, New Hampshire. Where is the Statue of Liberty? The New York Harbor. Name one state that borders Canada. New York. Name one state that borders Mexico. California. All right. How'd you do with geography? Hopefully that wasn't too bad. Next, we're going to talk about some important documents. Let's test your knowledge on this. What did the Declaration of Independence do? Announced our independence from Great Britain. What are two rights in the Declaration of Independence? Life and liberty. What is the supreme law of the land? The Constitution. What happened at the Constitutional Convention? The Constitution was written. What does the Constitution do? It sets up the government. The idea of self-government is in the first three words of the Constitution. What are these words? We the people. What is an amendment? A change to the Constitution. What do we call the first 10 amendments to the Constitution? The Bill of Rights. 
What is one right or freedom from the First Amendment? Speech. There are four amendments to the Constitution about who can vote. Describe one of them. Any citizen can vote. Or women and men can vote. Last one in this category. What is the name of the national anthem? The Star Spangled Banner. All right. How'd you do with those documents? Let's move on to rights and responsibilities. First question. What is the rule of law? Everyone must follow the law. What are two rights of everyone living in the United States? Freedom of speech and freedom of religion. What is freedom of religion? You can practice any religion or not practice a religion. What do we show loyalty to when we say the Pledge of Allegiance? The United States. What is one promise you make when you become a United States citizen? To be loyal to the United States. What is one responsibility that is only for United States citizens? To vote in a federal election. Very similar question. Name one right only for United States citizens. Same answer. To vote in a federal election. What are two ways that Americans can participate in their democracy? They can vote or they can run for office. All right, we are now on to wars and events. Any history buffs out there? Do you like to read about various wars in history? You'll be good at this one. All right, let's start. What is one reason colonists came to America? Freedom. Why did the colonists fight the British? Because of high taxes or taxation without representation. Name one war fought by the United States in the 1800s. The Civil War. Name the U.S. war between the North and the South. Again, the Civil War. Name one problem that led to the Civil War. Slavery. What did the Emancipation Proclamation do? Freed the slaves. 
Name one war fought by the United States in the 1900s. World War One. Who did the United States fight in World War Two? Japan, Germany, and Italy. During the Cold War, what was the main concern of the United States? Communism. What movement tried to end racial discrimination? The Civil Rights Movement. What major event happened on September 11, 2001 in the United States? Terrorists attacked the United States. Name two national U.S. holidays. New Year's Day and Christmas, my favorite. All right, so we're almost done. The very last section are questions that depend on where you live. So the answer will vary depending on what state you live in or also even what zip code you live in. So let's start. What is one of your state's U.S. Senators now? Remember, there are only two U.S. Senators per state and you can name one of them. You don't have to name both. Next question. Name your U.S. Representative. Now this one depends on your zip code. So it's very specific to where your physical address is. So make sure you look it up or check out the links in our description. Next, who is the governor of your state now? You should look that up or know it. <laughs> and lastly, what is the capital of your state? Now remember, the capital is not necessarily the most popular city. I know in California, it sure isn't. So make sure you do look that up. All right. Well, how did you do when we grouped them together into different categories? I'm curious, did you like this? Leave me a comment. Keep studying and I will see you next time. Take care, bye.